Welcome to the Air Gun Show. First of all, I'd like to announce that Chris Titchener is the winner of our 100th episode competition. Well done, Chris. Your prizes are on their way to you. In this week's show, we've got a review of an extremely compact chronograph from Air Force One. But before that, I'm heading out on what turns out to be a very productive squirrel shoot. should be in for quite an exciting session today. I'm targeting a feeding station that I've set up for grey squirrels. Now, the feeder's been in position for about a fortnight, but I've not shot it at all yet because I like to give the squirrels plenty of time to build up and get confident around the feeder. Now, over the last few days, the peanuts have been going down very rapidly, which suggests to me we've got quite a lot of squirrels visiting. So, all being well, we should be in for a few shots. But I've brought along the Daystate Wolverine R for today's session. Now, it's a gun that I've actually got on review. I've been shooting it quite a lot over the last few weeks and I just couldn't resist taking it out on a hunting session. It's legal limit, sub 12 foot pounds, 177 calibre, very quiet with the Airstream silencer on it and should be just about perfect for this kind of shooting. So, all I really need to do now is just try to keep quiet and hope that a few squirrels will move in. I may be shooting from a hide but I'm still going to put on my head net to conceal telltale patches of skin. Apart from the squirrels there are also quite a few crows around in this block of woodland and wily corvids certainly won't hang around if they spot a hunter peering up at them from the undergrowth. may not be what we're after but it's always nice to see woodpeckers visiting the feeder. Now judging by the rate that the peanuts have been going down over the last few days I'm sure it's not just birds that are visiting. I'm pretty confident the squirrels will be along before too long. Because the feeding station has been left in place for a while the woodland wildlife now recognises it as a reliable food source. So it's attracting plenty of visitors, including the hoped for grey squirrels. These greedy rodents really can't resist a peanut feeder. True to form, this squirrel doesn't take long to help itself to a peanut from the feeder. that was a typically fidgety squirrel and the best way to deal with them is just to let them take a peanut from the feeder then they'll settle on the top give you that still shot and that's our first one in the bag you usually need a bit of patience to make this sort of approach work but I don't have to wait long for my second chance today And once again, it's just a matter of letting the squirrel grab a peanut and settle on the hopper. And there's another one. I was worried that one was going to end up stuck on top of the feeder, but it's flopped off and it's on the deck now. Jays absolutely love peanuts and a feeder like this is a brilliant way to outwit them if you do need to keep their numbers down. 
We have shot a few here in these woods in the past, but this year the keeper and I have decided that we've got them down to a sensible level, so we're going to leave off of them for a while. The nest robbing jays may be enjoying a ceasefire, but that's not an option for the grey squirrels. This introduced species has had a serious negative impact on indigenous wildlife, so it's a zero tolerance policy for them. And there's another greedy customer brought to book. Now, I had a feeling that the squirrels were well on to this feeder, but they seem to be absolutely queuing up for it today. We seem to have timed this session very well, and the action really is coming thick and fast as squirrels home in on the feeder. You really can't beat feeding stations for this kind of pest control. They're a great way to make the most of your field time by creating a quarry hotspot. They also make for very humane shooting, as you're taking unobstructed shots at a static target over a predetermined range. The woodpecker has come back for another go at the peanuts, but it's not going to get a chance to get near the feeder this time as a greedy grey squirrel has beaten it to it. And there's another one. Not sure if we've managed to capture it on camera, but there was actually, the woodpecker had come back and was hanging back waiting to get to the feeder then, but it soon cleared off when that squirrel came bundling in. My hide has been in position since I set up the feeder. Consequently, the squirrels are used to it and taking it for granted, so there's no need to dress it with vegetation to keep it out of sight. I thought we'd see a few squirrels, as it's the first time I've actually set up a feeding station in this particular area of the woods, but they really are having it. It certainly goes to show the pulling power of those peanuts. And as the session rolls on, the action is showing no sign of slowing down yet. Well, that one hung on for a little bit, but it was another perfectly clean headshot. Now, Squirrels have a muscle reflex that tends to make them clench up and hang on when they get whacked in the head, but they're still effectively dead. A slightly longer wait follows, and I actually get a chance to enjoy the tranquility of the spring woods. But the squirrels still aren't letting up just yet. Oh, 
the squirrels really are all over this feeder today. Now aside from the obvious damage that they do to the trees here, it just makes you wonder how songbirds have a chance with so many nest robbing rodents around. Still, there are a few less here now though. Well, it's gone quiet now and I'm really not surprised given the number of squirrels that we've shot in a relatively short period of time. It really does go to show just how effective a peanut feeding station can be. What I'm going to do now before I leave is refill the feeder and I'll leave it a few days because I've got no doubt that there are still squirrels around here. So I'll come back again, continue to shoot until I'm not seeing any squirrels and then move it on to another spot and start all over again. A brilliant session on the squirrels there and I've already managed to bag half a dozen more from that feeding station. Now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Basque has met politicians to defend shooting against proposed changes to the licensing system. Chairman Peter Glenzer said he'd met MPs and Lords to discuss their future legislation plans and emphasise that they wouldn't accept anything that damaged shooting. He said, We are unwavering in our determination to secure outcomes on these issues which benefit shooting, produce a robust licensing system at a fair price and protect public safety. Five rural businesses were crowned the winners of the Countryside Alliance Awards last week. The Quex Barn in Kent won the local food and drink category, while Clink's Care Farm in Norfolk won the Rural Enterprise Award. Perry's of Eccleshaw was crowned Best Butcher, The Swan in Wiltshire was Best Pub, and Pontrillas Post Office in Herefordshire took home the Best Village Shop Prize. Environment Secretary Michael Gove was present to hand out the awards, which are known as the Rural Oscars. The Bale family could be the new dominant dynasty in target egg and shooting. Jack Bale, whose brother Dean won a bronze in the Commonwealth Games last month, took the senior men's rifle at the British Egg and Championships at Bisley. There was also a very close final in the senior women's rifle, with Hannah Pugsley just 0.3 points ahead of Kim Sarbach. Plus, the youngest Bale, Emily, won the junior women's event. And finally, we'll see you at the Northern Shooting Show next weekend. Early bird tickets are still available on the website, and at £12 for an adult day ticket, they're cheaper than what you pay on the gate. Plus, you get to beat the queues on the day. Egg and Shooter magazine will be there, along with sporting rifle and clay shooting. Find out about everything else that's there at northernshootingshow.co.uk. That was the Egg and Show News. We've not reviewed a chronograph on the show before, but they are vital pieces of kit. Crucially, for shooters to ensure that their air guns are within the legal limit. They're also very useful for checking the consistency of your air gun's muzzle velocity. With those points in mind, I asked the shooting party to send me the new Air Force One ballistically brilliant chronograph to take a closer look at. The first thing to really strike me about this unit is just how compact it is. It weighs just 280 grams, and although it's a bit too big to carry around in your pocket, it certainly is portable and takes up hardly any space at all in a kit bag. The ballistically brilliant chronograph comes supplied with two leads. One is for charging its integral battery via USB, and the other one is for uploading data to your laptop or PC. It also comes supplied with instructions, which I found easy enough to follow. If you do have any trouble at all operating it, Mike Duffy has made a brilliant instructional video on his air gun review channel. The battery needs a full charge before you get started. USB charging is via the plug socket at the rear of the unit. When it's fully charged, 
the red light next to the plug socket turns from red to green and you're good to go. Then it's just a matter of powering up using the on off switch at the back. Time is displayed on the LCD screen at the front. Press the lower light button and the backlight comes on if required. If you press the top mode button, the time display shifts to temperature in degrees centigrade and then Fahrenheit. Press it again and it shows humidity. You also use the mode and light buttons to set the time. Of course, the key feature of the ballistically brilliant chronograph is measuring muzzle velocity and it's stated as being accurate to within plus or minus 1.3%. From a safety point of view, it's vital to ensure that you have a sound backstop in place for this task. You also need to be aware of the fact that the tunnel you fire your pellet through is quite small, so you need to make sure that the muzzle is perfectly aligned with it. Fortunately, the unit is threaded to accept an adapter for a camera tripod, and that really does help. Press and hold the mode button and four bars show up on the screen to indicate that it's in chronograph mode. You now need to ensure that the muzzle is around six inches from the front of the chronograph and lined up for the shot. When you shoot, muzzle velocity is displayed on the screen in feet per second. The memory has sufficient capacity to save strings of up to 50 shots, which you can scroll back through by pressing the light button. You need to ensure that you leave the unit switched on so you don't lose that data, but the battery holds enough power to leave it switched on for several days. The basic unit doesn't allow you to input pellet weight to calculate muzzle energy in foot pounds, but owners are able to download software which does just that. Connect the unit to your computer via USB and you can access the data from those last 50 shots along with the temperature and humidity levels from when they were taken. Downloading the software and drivers is a bit of a faff, but it brings a brilliant extra dimension to the unit once you've got it up and running. And costing just £119.99, the Air Force One Ballistically Brilliant Chronograph is also very well priced. With such a compact, accurate and affordable chrono at your disposal, there really is no excuse for not knowing the power level of your air rifle. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.